All right, uh, good morning or good evening, perhaps, wherever this uh, may in fact find you. Uh, Chris Purnell here for Hobie Fishing, and welcome to the walkthrough of the Series 14 Hobie Kayak Fishing Championships Edition Compass that will be used this year at Mallacoota, uh, which is barely some three weeks, in fact, away from that event. So what we'd like to do is take an opportunity now to give each and every angler that's going to be competing with us over the course of that event, effectively a bow to stern walkthrough. We will do something very, very similar uh, as part of the briefing that we are doing, and that is our mandatory briefing on the Wednesday evening. Uh, but leading up to that event, whilst we are in fact using the compass this year, which is a step away perhaps from the pro anglers and outbacks that we have used in the past, we really wanted to explore and set out the versatility that the Hobie compass offers. Uh, so if we can, Brad, we're just about to go through and ladies and gentlemen, those of you that will be with us, just uh, work with us here as we go through, just literally stepping through each of the components. And we'd like to give you that really, really handy rundown just to know that you're not going to be lacking in any way, shape or form with storage and functionality on the craft this year. So Brad, let's start off at the bow. Um, we have updated the compass bags specifically for this event. Um, the bow hatch bags that we're using here will give you the ability to take with you at least three of the 3700 size Plano boxes and up to five of the 3600 boxes there that you'll be able to take with you. Now, I'd like to think that uh, with that array of hard bodies, blades, vibes, uh, you've got more than enough tackle storage alone in the bow there to be able to get you through the event and some. Um, so the bags this time around, in fact, will come with a waterproof style zip that will keep all of those inclusions nice and locked away there. You've also got a further Velcro attachment there to be able to put another tackle tray in on top if you choose to. Um, we have got these sashed down with a bungee cord. Um, to keep those nice and secure there. If we do see a, uh, a little bit of breeze on the water down there at Kuta, but they are not going anywhere. Um, simple accessibility, once we do go to take those off at the end of the day, you'll be able to take that with you back to your place of residence or camping, wherever you might be, um, and take all your tackle with you. We have used and relocated what will be the eight inch hatch that is the standard fitment of a compass. And we've set that there in with our FPV battery and our Burley Pro Batarang uh, that's being used as part of this year's tournament setup. Um, so that'll be the standard fitment uh, in underneath there. So a great spot for the use of that battery system um, with your tackle trays and the like perfectly stored up on the bow. As we move back through, uh, it is a hook reveal seven, um, complete with the Burley Pro visor. Uh, and thank you very much to the team, I will say in advance, at Navico and CMAP. Uh, we have just this week confirmed, in fact, that the full CMAP Navionics offering will be in place for the event. Um, so you'll get all of the mapping for the Malakuta Inlet that will be installed on the, uh, on the units for you for use. Um, they are paired up, obviously, just with a, a one and a half inch track ball. Um, everything's there, rigged up, ready to go. Now, I do know that we've had some anglers just making some commentary, which you're certainly welcome to do so about the placement of those, whether we can switch them from the left to the right, or sorry, from the right to the left. In this instance, guys and girls, it is going to be a standard fitment on the right-hand side. And unfortunately, we're not in a position to be able to create, I guess, a, a personalised fitment for each and every angler. And one of the things that we are trying to achieve with these setouts is effectively what we have done in our prior history, is that it's a one design set out. Um, not too dissimilar to the way that we've operated our Hobie Cat sailing events in the past for 14s, 16s, 18s, it's standard design. So every single angler in this case is going to be competing on what will be an otherwise identically rigged platform. Um, coming back through as a saying that we have installed the rectangular hatch in lieu of the eight inch hatch. Um, again, you're all familiar with the uh, with the eight inch hatches, or sorry, the rectangular hatches that are available. Um, this year we have also par partnered up, and I will say a very big thank you to Marty Gittens, and obviously the team at Burley Pro. Um, the Burley Pro gear bucket is in there complete as part of that rectangular gear bucket setup. So hard bodies up the front, your soft plastics, your leader, your tooling and the like is all readily accessible in that rectangular hatch set out um, that is in place. 
Um, standard MD180 turbo drive, um, as you would all be quite well aware of, um, is in place here. I'll take a few moments just to go through what is going to be termed to be some of the options that you as anglers are permitted to bring as part of your inclusions with the set out on this particular event kayak. Um, in particular, speaking of rod holders uh, and rod storage. So you have the two track mounted rod holders on either side, obviously we're utilizing one of those with the hook reveal. Uh, on the left hand side there, the suggestions at this point in time that you may choose to work with um, are going to be either a ram ball track mount, you have a perhaps a railblazer mini port that you might find useful depending on your uh, chosen style of rod holder and then this in fact is a universal adapter track mount. So that will take from what we do believe the majority if not all um, of the various types of fitments uh, whether it be Railblazer, Scotty or other brands um, that people might be, uh, be using. Each of those three are all available through Hobie Outlets. So whether it's the guys in Queensland at Sun State, uh, James up at Hunter Water Sports, uh, the team here at Totally Immersed, you've got Complete Angler and Camping World, Gregory Hills, Bass Angler at Penrith, Marimbula, Canberra, and obviously uh, Scott Lovick, Hobie, and of course Action Water Sports down in Victoria. So um, any one of those outlets, you're certainly able to jump in and grab um, any of those components that you might require. The various rod holders that you then might choose to put on those is entirely up to you. So obviously anything from the Ram Stable, that Universal Fit, or your Railblazer. So when we are competing there, and we're trying to keep this space, I guess, as functioning as we can, so if you do have your fish, you've got your net, you're back here working with your net back over the top of the deck. And if you do have a rod holder here that you can then obviously stow your rod in to make this working area the most useful uh, space that it can be, um, we think that perhaps the use of adding in one of those rod holders there will in fact provide some benefit to you. So they're the options that you have available in that space. As we just move back a little bit and keeping on the options that you are uh, in fact able to bring, um, the Hobie rod holder extension uh, can be installed into the standard fitted rod holders that are in place there already. The addition of those rod holder extensions obviously just to try and keep your reels away from the water's edge back at the gunnel level of the kayak um, if you so choose to do that. Um, alternatively, as you are all too well aware, they do double down as a fairly handy holder for the net as well. So they are a couple of options that are allowed uh, as such. Um, in fact, I'll keep those there. And finally, just on the optional front, um, we've spoken a little bit about the addition uh, for a few anglers about kayak cushions and seat upgrades, just to try and give you a little bit more comfort on the water, um, if that's something that you do require. Um, obviously, adding that kayak cushion in there, you're most welcome to do so. And if any of you do have some of the earlier style uh, Hobie lumber supports, if you'd like to bring those along, you're quite welcome to do that as well. Um, in this particular instance, what we are trying to keep in fact in place is that consistent branding and logo uh, for all the Hobie branded product uh, that we'd like to maintain through the event. So just recapping that very, very quickly, the addition of various style track mount rod holders are approved and you're most welcome to grab any of those components from your Hobie dealers. Uh, the Hobie cushion and or if any of the dealers have any of the original uh, lumber seat backs, um, all available through the Hobie network. Uh, and of course, that Hobie rod holder extension uh, is also permissible. So as we go from there, ladies and gents, obviously a straightforward 2022-2023 onward style uh, compass seat. We have paired up the Vantage seat bag up on the back of those just to make a little bit of extra storage again if it's required. Uh, whether it is one of your Plano boxes that you'd like to drop in there or any of the other personal effects. Um, same thing again, being able to obviously sash that away. There are some other ties on there that if you may like to tether off to. Uh, and in particular, some of either the Hobie Gear Keepers um, or some of that Gerber product. If you're wanting to keep pliers and things out of the way, you can grab hold of some of those to uh, make the use of that cockpit space as free and open for landing your fish. Um, for your personal effects, um, there is a standard supplied Hobie dry bag. 
Um, so whether that's phone, wallet and keys that you'd like to have down inside the hull or back up on top, that will be a standard fitment for you. Uh, Livewell is with three rod holders. Um, now in talking to some of the anglers as we've been going through the setup for this, um, it has been known that some of, in fact, the new, newest uh, incarnations of the Daiwa in-feet rods, I think with the uh, SK series, Brad, um, in actual fact, you can fit two rods down inside each of those tubes if need be. But it will be standard fit out three. Um, there will be no additional rod holders permissible to be cable tied or otherwise onto those. So three rod holders here, two here, plus your additional here. Um, will in fact give you the ability to have six placements if in fact you deem that you need that. Um, obviously, finally, outside of your live well is your micro power pole is standard fitment. So, with all of that having been said, um, one, we'd like to make sure that everybody is well abreast of exactly what is included on the product. Uh, we do believe that there is more than sufficient stowage uh, on board for you. Uh, to make your ability to compete as part of these championships absolutely perfect. Um, if anybody does have any additional questions, queries, concerns, commentary, please tag them through in this particular video and post. Um, I guess all the anglers will be in a position to review some of those questions and it might actually, in fact, answer some questions that they may have had ahead of time, having had another angler, in fact, already ask. Um, but I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the countless sponsors that are involved as part of this year's event, uh, and in particular with the addition of the team at Burley Pro and FPV, uh, on top of what is our regular uh, kayak series sponsorship group, and of course uh, the team at Podium Marine Wraps. Um, Corey, you've been an absolute sensation to work with, mate. Thank you very, very much. Uh, and we look forward to finalising the back end of all of this setup. Uh, somewhere through the middle of next week so that we can get loading uh, and then get on the road. So we'll be on the road from Sunday the 5th. We'll be doing our setup on the 6th and 7th and 8th prior to each of the anglers arriving there on the Wednesday uh, for that mandatory briefing down at the Malakuta Golf Club. Uh, and we will be on the water with you all for pre-fish day, the Lawrence pre-fish day in fact, uh, on the Thursday. So there will be a different start line set up this year, which we will be going through with you as part of that mandatory briefing. Um, so just keep in mind that it is a slightly different format to that of a usual Hobie round start. But given the location where we need to be launching from, we will be moving anglers out into a portion uh, that is approximately halfway between the launch and Carbathon to try and make sure that our start line gives access to both the top lake and the bottom lake as part of the event. But please, anglers, keeping in mind that your return journey, you do need to, in fact, come all the way back to where the stationing of the event is being held, and that is where the weigh-in will be done. So we'll go through that in a lot more detail once we get down to Malakuta for the briefing on the Wednesday evening. But for now, that is your video walkthrough of the camo compass that will be used as part of the Series 14 Hobie Kite Fishing Australian Championships. Remember to drop your comments in uh, as part of this thread and we look forward to seeing each and every one of you on the Wednesday at the Malakuta Golf Club for your mandatory briefing. And finally, thank you very much to our naming rights sponsor for the series, in fact, with the team at Daiwa. So Greg and team, thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. We just simply can't do this without you. See you down there.